Your lecture notes are important for your assignment, but you will usually need to find additional information yourself. Um, lecturers will give you lecture notes in, form, in the form of handouts or on PowerPoint. There are three key steps to planning your assignment and to finding information. These consist of planning, searching and evaluating. So first of all, you should plan your search. Think about what you know already and what you need to find out. What sources of information will you search? So before you start your search, before you even start searching for information, you need to say to yourself, what is it that I want to search? What is it uh, that I want to find out? What is it that I've been asked to find out? So what sources of information then am I going to search? You don't just launch into looking for information because there are so many sources of information out there. You need to be clear in your head what it is that you want to search. Then consider the keywords to use when searching. You might need to use different words that mean the same thing. For example, you might want to use the word teenager or adolescent or youth. As you can see, these words all mean the same thing. But in your search, you will find that depending on the word that you put in the search engine, you will get uh, different responses. Okay, some writers talk about adolescents instead of teenagers. So you will be able to find information in their literature. Some, some writers will talk about youth when in fact they are referring to teenagers. So it's important to use different words that mean the same thing. When you start searching, it may happen that you don't find information you need. So your search strategy might change. You might use different keywords or try searching a different resource. Don't just see, stick to the same resource. If you can't find what you want, you do try and search somewhere else. So if you're looking for information and you're looking in books and you're not actually finding what it is that you're looking for, try searching journal articles or try searching in newspaper articles. Once you find enough information, it is very important to evaluate it. It's important to evaluate what we read just because information is out there doesn't mean it's always the perfect information. So when we read information, we do need to critically evaluate. We need to look at it with a, a critical mind. So in order to do this, you need to use the three W's, that is the who, the why, and the when. The who is the author. So who is the author who has written whatever book, article, or newspaper article that you, you want to read? What is their authority and expertise? It's important to ask the question, what authority does this person have in the subject area? And when I say what authority do these people have, does the author have? What I mean by that is that someone who has conducted research in an area, someone who has spent some time, some extended time looking at an area in terms of research, let's say, for example, they've done a, a doctoral thesis which took them six years to do. They have authority. They speak with authority because they have spent a lot of time looking at that subject area. Somebody who has spent an extended period of time writing a book or writing an area, they have they've researched it and they know about it. So it's very important to, 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 that your information that you, 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 you refer to is of people, of authoritative sources, people who have conducted research, people who know what they are talking about, people who are theorists, for example, people who have developed a theory. So 
So you also need to look then at why and ask yourself the question, why was the information created? So what is this information about? Why was it created? Is it based on factual information or on opinion? Was it written to educate or to entertain? So you need to ask yourself this question and you need to look at does the information present a balanced argument? It's important to look at information that presents a balanced argument. Is it only one-sided? Is it, is it biased? As you go progress in your studies and I suppose go into fourth year or third year of your degree program, lecturers expect that you critically evaluate information more and more. And what that means is that it asks you to look at balanced views and uh, balanced arguments that scholars and authors and writers present. It's important to look at when information was created, uh, especially when you are looking at information that's on websites. Very important to look at when was this information created and then when was the website updated? If it's an, an, a website that was created a long time ago, 10 years ago, and it has never been updated, surely you should ask yourself the question, in the past 10 years, some more new, fresh information has come into, into being. It's not on this website. So be sure to be able to, to, to reference information that's more current and also information that's that is from a long time ago. For example, you might be looking at attachment theory, for example, which was created by John Bowlby. And if you think about John Bowlby and you think about the 60s, well, now we are in the, in, in the 50s. So a, a, an extended period of time has passed. So after Bowlby has written about attachment theory, other theorists have come and critiqued his theory. They've come and evaluated this theory. So in your citation of the literature, it is important to be able to, to demonstrate that ability to, to know that uh, the, the, the information has moved on and, and has changed and other writers have come in and have said other, have given other points of view from what was said 50 years ago. Websites, newspapers, and social media are very useful for a new topic, but you must evaluate the quality of information that is presented. If we think, for example, about the Irish Times or the Irish Independent, vis-a-vis -vis the Daily Mirror or the Star, when we look at those different newspapers, they present information very, very differently. It's important for you to be able to make a judgment of which newspaper article would you reference, which newspaper article, which source would you take information from, and which one is an authoritative source that you can in include in your academic writing. Because in newspaper articles, as we know, um, they, they gather information, but how authoritative is a paper um, when it presents information is a good question to ask yourself. Wikipedia is a bit like Google. People use it. It's a good source. It's a good source for um, being a first port of call. So you go to Wikipedia, you go to Google. It's like a search engine. You go into it, you put in information and it's a lot comes back to you. So you can be searching for, for anything. Let's say you're searching for the meaning of a word. Let's say you're, you're searching for the word research or you're searching for the word museum. You will get a definition. But it's important not just to copy and paste from Wikipedia and then reference Wikipedia, but to go to published and peer-reviewed literature and look to see and what exactly is, is said. And when I talk about peer-reviewed information, I'm talking about uh, information that is written in books, 
and in journal articles. That information that's been reviewed by other scholars, other scholars who are more experienced in the subject area, and therefore it's more authentic. That information is authentic. It is auth an authoritative scholarship base about it because it has been peer reviewed. So it's important to, to, to use uh, peer reviewed sources if you can. And finally, remember to keep a record of the information that you, you obtain from the literature, be it books or journal articles, because normally students go into a mad panic when they are compiling their reference, reference list or bibliography because suddenly they realize, hmm, I have this lovely assignment written, I have put in everything that I could, but they can't remember where did I get Paul Jones or where did I get um, Anne MacDonald. So therefore, it wastes a lot of time if you have to go back and try and look at where you got the information. So it's important to keep a record and remind yourself then of where you've got the information and um, and therefore it will make it much easier for you much much easier to to compile your reference list or your bibliography and finally happy searching the literature